Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. So we've just finished watching AMD's keynote and joining in with some of you guys in our Discord chat for some discussion on the event. Pretty interesting stuff, but at the same time, AMD didn't really pull any major surprises. The two big things they discussed were some minor details on third generation Ryzen 4 desktop, plus a full announcement of AMD Radeon 7, which is their upcoming consumer Vega 7 animated GPU and there was no word on Navi at all. So let's first kick things off with what AMD showed on third generation Ryzen CPUs for desktop. As expected, we didn't get the full product stack unveil, anything like that, just a few teasers and a couple of demos. The big news is Lisa Su showed off the actual third gen Ryzen package at the show, and Anantec also managed to get some close-ups of the CPU at a private meeting. Basically, what we're seeing is a multi-die approach with an IO die, similar to what the company Company first showed off last year with their Epic CPUs. On the left is the IO die in question, and on the right is the 7 nanometer CPU core chiplet with 8 cores inside. Not super surprising to see this sort of design considering that's what they first announced with Epic, but we do actually have official confirmation that that's what it's looking like for third gen Ryzen. We don't have any other details to go on, so no clock speeds and no confirmation about what Ryzen 3rd Gen's final core count will be for the high-end part. You can see there is clearly space on the package for a second CPU core chiplet or perhaps a GPU die for AMD's desktop APUs, but AMD isn't ready to talk about anything beyond what they showed off today. Theoretically, a 16-core CPU would be possible with the second chiplet shoved in there, but we just don't know if AMD will release higher core count models this generation or in a future generation. One example I like to think of is first gen Threadripper, which topped out at 16 cores with two 8 core dies and two dummy dies. Uh, and that was only increased to 32 cores and zero dummy dies with second gen Threadripper. Now, I'm not saying one way or another when AMD might choose to put 16 cores on AM4, but I wouldn't just go assume that because there's a gap on the interposer for another chiplet, that AMD will fill that spot this generation. Will they fill it at some point? I think almost certainly. Um, when will they fill it though? There's no official word at this stage. When Ian Cutris from Anantec asked AMD about more than eight cores, their answer was, there is some extra room on the package. You might expect us to put more on that package. Again, no confirmation on when that will occur, uh, whether this is you know, with a first generation of this sort of design or with a future product line. They also weren't willing to discuss whether the eight core model shown off at the show is a flagship CPU or something more mainstream. However, they did confirm it would support PCIe 4.0, just like their Epic CPUs. However, they did pit third gen Ryzen up against Intel's flagship Core i9 9900K in Cinebench, with both processors scoring roughly the same amount, around 2050 points in the multi threaded workload. But the key piece of information here is the total system power consumption for the 9900K was around 180 watts compared to 130 watts for the third gen Ryzen unit with identical components inside otherwise. This means the Zen 2 sample was operating at around 75 watts compared to 125 watts for the 9900K. Also, we can do some basic extrapolation on the score AMD achieved here. The Ryzen 7 2700X hits around 1770 points in Cinebench. So with Ryzen 3000 hitting 2050 or so, that's a 16% increase with an early engineering sample. AMD was keen to stress clock speeds aren't final, and it's hard to say exactly how this Zen 2 CPU is clocked because we're not sure how much of a factor IPC improvements have had in delivering this final score. But if the gains are purely from clock speeds, the demo system would be running around 4.5 to 4.6 gigahertz all core at 75 watts, which is very impressive and shows off what AMD will be able to achieve with seven nanometers. It's worth mentioning that AMD's past demos have used CPUs clocked reasonably close to their final clock, so I wouldn't be expecting performance to change significantly from what AMD showed off today. But this demo is quite early compared to the product release, which AMD said is expected to happen mid-2019. No specific month or anything was given. So that's all on Ryzen 3rd generation. We got a look at the package. We got a performance demo with some power consumption figures, and we know that one model will be eight cores. So there were no product names, no clock speeds, no pricing, no firm launch dates, and nothing else was discussed. We'll have to wait for final details, and that will happen much closer to the launch.
However, AMD did make one product announcement, as we mentioned in our last video discussing AMD's plans for CES, and that product is a consumer 7 nanometer Vega GPU known as the Radeon 7. It's stylized as VII, but it's apparently pronounced 7, Roman numerals and all that sort of thing. It's the world's first 7 nanometer gaming GPU, and it's based on their die shrink of Vega 2 7 nanometers, also known as Vega 20. Luckily for us, AMD wasn't shy with information about the Radeon 7, and that makes sense because the card will be available on February 7th. It has 60 compute units for a total of 3840 stream processors, a little less than what we saw with Vega 64's 64 compute units. However, clock speeds are much higher. AMD said the card can hit 1800 MHz compared to 1546 MHz for Vega 64. We're also getting faster 2 gigabit per second HBM2 and a whopping 16 gigabytes of it on a 4096-bit bus. Vega 20 also has a better backend, improved over first-gen Vega, which should improve performance in some situations. Most notably, the ROP count has doubled from 64 to 128, and that should solve a lot of bottlenecks with the design. While the Radeon 7 has fewer compute units and it's only clocked 16% higher than Vega 64, some of those small architecture improvements mean higher than expected performance gains in games. AMD is stating the Radeon 7 should be between 20 and 42% faster than Vega 64, with an overall average of 29%. As this is a flagship card, AMD have gone all out with performance, so power consumption is said to be the same as Vega 64 at around 300 watts. AMD is utilizing 7 nanometers to achieve higher performance here, rather than lower power consumption with this particular product. In terms of a comparison with NVIDIA, AMD showed the Radeon 7 matching or beating the GeForce RTX 2080 in games like Battlefield 5, Far Cry 5, and Strange Brigade with unspecified configurations. If that is what performance will actually be like in the end across a wide variety of games, that's pretty decent from AMD's new flagship, without going all out and matching the RTX 2080 Ti. AMD also showed a demo of Devil May Cry 5 running on the Radeon 7 at 4K, and it was hitting upwards of 80 FPS, although there was no comparison to any other hardware. For pricing, the Radeon 7 also matches the RTX 2080 at an MSRP of $699. US dollars. This seems fine, but it's a little disappointing that AMD, like NVIDIA I guess, isn't really adding anything new in terms of price to performance ratio in the high-end GPU market. With NVIDIA dominating this space for so long, they've been able to push out their RTX 2080 with a very similar value proposition to their previous GTX 1080 Ti, and well, AMD has basically just come in and matched that here. Now we have, I guess, competition in the RTX 2080 class, but there's been really no progress on value. As this is a GPU using Vega, AMD will also run into a few of the issues that have plagued them for a while now. Power consumption for the Radeon 7 will likely be much higher than the RTX 2080, and you won't get any accelerated ray tracing functionality. Now, ray tracing isn't all that useful just yet, but still, it's a feature that Nvidia has with their card that AMD doesn't. We're also in the position where AMD is only currently able to match the RTX 2080 on seven nanometers, at a higher level of power consumption. NVIDIA's GPUs are still using 12 nanometers and are still more efficient, and at the very top end, still more powerful as well. AMD definitely has a long way to go with their next generation GPU architectures to improve that picture, especially as NVIDIA's seven nanometer or perhaps eight nanometer cards are on the horizon. But at least for now, with what is largely a year and a half old architecture, AMD can hit RTX 2080 level performance for the first time. The Radeon 7 GPU itself ditches the blower style cooler for a triple fan design with a beefy heatsink beneath. And there appears to be a nice metal shroud around it, all with red Radeon branding. We should be getting our own Radeon 7 card relatively soon for testing, so stay tuned for the usual benchmarks and comparisons around the card's release on February 7th. Also, anyone who buys a Radeon 7 GPU will get Tom Clancy's The Division 2 bundled in for free. Alternatively, you can buy either a select Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 CPU to also get The Division 2 in a bundle. Aside from a third generation Ryzen teaser and the announcement of Radeon 7, AMD didn't really discuss anything else worth mentioning, although they did spend some time, I guess, rehashing previous announcements, such as their second gen mobile APU lineup. The Ryzen stuff is the most interesting to both Steve and I, although there's still a lot to play out there. Simply put, you know, there's 
so much we don't know about these processes at this point. While not super surprising considering AMD did launch the Radeon 7, there wasn't a single mention of AMD's next generation Navi GPUs in the keynote. No roadmap updates or teasers, which does suggest it is still quite some time away. And I guess that makes sense. AMD wouldn't want to launch the Radeon 7, then supersede it or their recently released RX 590 so quickly. Navi is still scheduled for 2019, but at this point it's looking more like a second half of the year product. So I woke up at 4 a.m. local time here in Australia to cover this launch, so I'm pretty tired at this point. Gonna go edit this one, upload it, then get some rest, I reckon. There'll probably be a few more tidbits to come out of CES throughout the rest of the week, but this was the last major keynote after we had NVIDIA and Intel already deliver their press conferences a few days ago. So that's it for this one. As always, you can subscribe for more news updates throughout CES and also to catch our Radeon 7 review at some point in the future. As always, you can consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our monthly live streams and exclusive Discord chat. I'll catch you in the next one.